Hi, it's Darren Marlar, and before I start the podcast, just want to let you know that your reviews on iTunes make a world of difference. So if you're listening on iTunes, please take a moment and leave a positive review. Thanks. This podcast is part of the Bomb Pod Media Network. From DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. This episode is brought to you by the audiobook Could It Be True? Volume 1 Urban Legends by Cindy Parmeter, narrated by Darren Marlar. Hear a free sample or purchase the title at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. A Colorado family is trying to get a jogger they've dubbed the Mad Pooper from relieving herself in their neighborhood and outside their house. Kathy Budd says her kids caught the woman jogger mid-squat, pants down, and unashamed. She says her kids told her, there's a lady taking a poop. So I come outside and I'm like, are you serious? Are you really taking a poop right here in front of my kids? She's like, yeah, sorry. And would you please pass me some leaves? Blondes not only have more fun, they also have more moxie, more pluck, more backbone, and more spunk, says a recent study. In short, fair-haired females outshine both redheads and brunettes when it comes to aggressiveness and self-confidence, reports lead researcher Aaron Sell of the University of California. Researchers studied 156 American codes to find links between self-confidence and aggression. They found that women who sported blonde manes were consistently the queens of the female jungle, and it didn't matter if they came by their blondness naturally or by a bottle. So, if you want to be the king of your own castle, don't marry Goldilocks. A study shows that using a keyboard up to seven hours a day does not lead to carpal tunnel syndrome, the painful hand condition that was associated with repetitive motion. So does this mean that everybody who wears those dopey braces while typing can finally take them off now? Young drivers believe it's dangerous to talk and to text on smartphones while they're driving. But they're doing it anyway, according to a study from Consumer Reports. The magazine found that of those young drivers surveyed, almost all said they considered texting, accessing the internet, or using smartphone apps while driving to be dangerous, with 80% saying it was very dangerous. Some 63% said talking on a handheld phone behind the wheel was dangerous. Yet their self-reported behavior revealed that almost half of them talked on a cell phone while driving during the past month, nearly 30% texted, 8% operated smartphone apps, and 7% used social media or email. Because, as we all know, before the age of 25, you're immortal. The U.S. announced tougher sanctions against North Korea. For example, now they can only import the smooth peanut butter. People do not start out as sourpusses. They get grumpy as they age. A recent study reveals that grumpiness begins at age 52 and mushrooms as people get older. The least cranky humans are the babies, who laugh an average of 300 times a day. But by the time they've grown into teenagers, the chuckles have plummeted to just six daily. Folks over 60 laugh a sulky two and a half times every 24 hours. It's no wonder the older men are usually portrayed as grouches, because guys tend to be a lot crabbier than gals. So be warned, I'm about to turn 49 years old and right on the cusp of getting crabby. So enjoy me while you can, you young whippersnappers! The dust in your home could be causing you to gain weight. According to a new study, dust could be the real culprit for your weight gain. Duke University conducted a study and learned that dust creates a chemical that alters your hormones and tells your body to start building up fat. Their researchers found that even the tiniest amounts of dust can trigger your weight gain. All right, now I don't care if this is true or not, but I'm claiming it. Now, where are my ho hos? While we're on the subject, a study says sleeping less than seven hours a night can make people fatter. You know what? I'm going to blame it on that too, so shut up. Pennsylvania high school golfer got two holes in one in the same round. The achievement came during a nine-hole practice round on Monday. The holes in one were on the clown mouth hole and the one with the turning windmill. North Korea's foreign minister, Rai Yong-ho, says President Trump's personal insults against Kim Jong-un 
have increased the likelihood that North Korea will attack the U.S. Rai Young Ho? Wow! <laughs> Think of the fun our Commander-in-Chief's going to have with that name! Well, this is just crazy. There was a home in Florida that was spared by Hurricane Irma, but last week it was swallowed by a sinkhole. Yeah, is, is this a real story, or are they filming another Final Destination movie? White House advisor and presidential son-in-law Jared Kushner apparently used a private email account to communicate with White House staffers. <laughs> please, please tell me this is from a private server sitting in his bathroom. That would be too good. Cher says she keeps her costumes in a special temperature-controlled unit to preserve them. Rumor has it that's also where she keeps her birthday suit. The Trump administration's travel ban has been extended to North Korea, Venezuela, and Chad. So, if your name is Chad, you can no longer travel? A new study says that more than one in eight Americans are alcoholics. I'll drink to that. Jerry Lewis left all six of his children from his first marriage out of his will. I'm sure they'll be able to recoup all that money with a tell-all book. A so-called Christian numerologist predicted the world would end last Saturday. So I'm, I'm just checking. Did it end? I was kind of hoping for a little bit better life than this in the afterlife. If a woman finds that the kind and considerate man she has lived with for years suddenly stops helping with the laundry and taking out the trash, it's probably because the couple got married. Researchers have found cohabiting couples are far more likely than those who are married to split housework evenly. But after the wedding, they revert to the typical stereotype, with the woman taking on the great majority of tasks. Well, yeah, I mean, why do you think we ask you to marry us? Lillian Betancourt, heiress to the L'Oreal Cosmetics Empire and the world's wealthiest woman, has died. She was 94, and she always felt like a blood relative to me. I mean, I'll miss, uh, uh, what's her name again? Uh, oh, oh yeah, uh, uh, Lillianne, yeah, I'll, I'll miss her. Data shows that Amazon's price cuts at Whole Foods resulted in an increase of 25% more shoppers. Lower prices equals more customers. Who would have thunk it? Are you listening, Ferrari? A study says cheat days may help dieters lose weight. Honestly, I didn't read any further than that. A new study says that loneliness is as bad for you as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. And if no one has a thing to do with you and you already smoke 15 cigarettes a day, you're double dipping. This episode's brought to you by the audiobook Could It Be True? Volume 1 Urban Legends by Cindy Parmiter. Hear a free sample or purchase the title at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. If you've put on weight since you tied the knot, it might mean you are happily wed. New research in health psychology found that over four years, both happily married men and women raised their BMIs by 0.12 every six months. Unhappy couples, however, stayed the same size. So, I'm fat and happy. Yeah, I can accept that. General Mills says it'll bring back Trix cereal with artificial colors and flavors. So the current version will be called New Trix, and the old version being brought back will be labeled Trix Classic. On average, 1,700 Americans a year go to the emergency room after injuring an eye with a toothbrush. Dear America, you're doing it wrong! In a speech, Bill Gates apologized to Microsoft users for Control-Alt-Delete to start Windows instead of having a separate button. Dude, if you're going to apologize, I'd start by saying you're sorry for the blue screen of death. Am I right, weirdos? A big desk, especially in a corner office, is the best sign you've made it in the corporate world, but something quite ominous can happen when executives sit behind those mammoth desks in cavernous offices with lots of room to spread out to work. They're more likely to become greedy. That lush corporate environment in which they work day in and day out makes them feel far more powerful than they have ever felt before. And it's not just big desks that cause this. Big car seats do the same. And you don't have to be a highly paid top corporate executive to relate to this. You just have to drive an SUV. 
That's the word from researchers at Columbia University in New York City who've concluded that having a sense of power and big desks or big car seats leads to this can encourage a range of dishonest behavior. This includes such things as stealing, cheating, lying, unethical behavior, willfully breaking traffic laws, and parking illegally. As in, the rules by which the rest of us abide don't seem to apply to these big people. Uh, fair warning, world. My wife wants to buy a truck. A cafe in Wales has come up with a unique way of deterring pesky pigeons from bothering its customers. The owners of Coffee Fresco in Swansea provided water pistols for their customers to aim at any pigeon that lands on their table. I say we bring this to restaurants in the United States and aim at spoiled brat kids who won't stop screaming. A semi-truck carrying 40,000 pounds of vodka overturned in North Carolina. Even if you're not drinking and driving, the road is. Tom Brady's new book is being criticized for questionable health tips. For example, Brady says drinking plenty of water prevents sunburn, so he drinks an incredible two and a half gallons of water each day. Well, no wonder he's always calling timeouts. Former U.S. President Bill Clinton's debut novel, The President is Missing, co-authored with prolific thriller writer James Patterson, will not hit shelves for almost a year, but it will be adapted into a Showtime series. Okay, now, now I've not read it, but my guess is that it's about the nation's first female president who then disappears, and the first gentleman is really happy about it. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton's new book, What Happened, has already sold 300,000 copies, mostly to people with the last name of Clinton. Luke Bryan has been locked in as the second judge in the reboot of American Idol this spring. So far, it's Katy Perry and Luke. Hey, Luke Perry! The new iPhones are here, just in case you find yourself with too much money in your checking account. Turns out you really can be bored to death, or close to it. While boredom alone is not likely to kill you, experts from University College London warned that it appears the more bored you are, the more likely you are to die early. Why? Well, if you're bored, you're more likely to engage in risky behavior to ward off that boredom, including drinking, smoking, or taking drugs, and that can lead to heart problems. So, save your own life and the lives of others. Tell everybody else that you know about the Daily Dose of Weird News so they won't be bored. Boy, that didn't sound totally self-serving at all, did it? A new study says that locals living in tourism hotspots can feel detached from their communities. You know, I'd, I'd probably uh, become a shut-in myself during peak tourism season, and I'd be happy about it. A study has determined that people who meet online are more likely to break up, most often because in her picture she looked like a young Christy Brinkley, but in real life she looks more like an old David Brinkley. Household debt in the U.S. has reached a record $12.8 trillion. You know, I think half of that is mine. Men may wear the underpants in the family, but women buy them. According to a major department store, men typically purchase their own underwear for just 17 years of their lives. The rest of the time, their mothers, wives, or gal pals do the honors. Most guys only buy new underwear when they're about to start a new relationship, says department store rep Rob Fosherand. You can tell when a man is looking for a partner by the number of new underpants he buys, notes Fosherand. Men tend to buy the most underwear for themselves at age 23, but that goes into a steady decline, bottoming out about 10 years later when, presumably, they are in a stable enough relationship to have their significant other do it. There is an uptick in underwear buying when guys hit the age of 38 when many are going through breakups, but by the age of 44, they typically don't have to bother anymore because they have found somebody new. And sometimes that somebody new is Amazon.com. The world's most valuable brands have been ranked. Apple finished first. I don't have the list in front of me, but I'm guessing Radio Shack came in second. A recent study shows the average person loses up to nine items every day. Phones, keys, sunglasses, and paperwork top the list. <laughs> nine things a day that we lose? Yikes! I mean, that only makes sense if you include stuff like losing your temper, losing your mind, losing your, uh, um, 
Sorry, I, I lost my train of thought. According to a new study, women prefer the natural odor of men who eat healthy. Well, that explains why there's no men's cologne called stank beer and stale cheese balls. That Christian numerologist who predicted the world was going to end last weekend has updated his prediction to October 21st. Because of course he has. Dying pro wrestler Ric Flair tells People magazine he's not proud of sleeping with over 10,000 women over the years because he doesn't want his grandkids to know. Well, you know what? I think you gave up that goal when you told People magazine about it, Rick. For the first time, Twitter is explaining why President Trump's tweets don't get pulled when they seem to continually violate the same rules the rest of us have to follow. It basically comes down to this. Because he's the president. In a blog post and series of tweets, the company said that it considers a number of factors in deciding whether a tweet violates the rules, including newsworthiness and whether a tweet is of public interest. Well, given that uh, Trump is in fact president, everything he tweets could thus be considered newsworthy, so it seems he gets a blanket protection for all his tweets. Boy, you, this news is not going to do anything to deflate that ego of his. In Russia, Burger King is asking to ban the Stephen King movie It because they say the clown looks too much like Ronald McDonald. <laughs> oh, sometimes you just can't make this stuff up, can you? Now, I would think that'd be a good thing. You know, if the clown is scaring the crap out of everybody, wouldn't that be something Burger King would like? A man in China was fined for driving a car without a windshield and using a plastic stool as a front seat. And now you know why China doesn't have a powerful automotive industry export business. Turns out there is no need to worry when the kids are out for a drive with Grandpa and Grandma. Provided with data from an insurance company, researchers from the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia analyzed injuries involving children. And surprisingly, kids were twice as safe when riding with grandparents than with their own parents. Dr. Fred Heintrig and colleagues suggest that grandparents may be extra cautious when driving around with their precious cargo. Well, that and the fact that they have a flashing blinker on at all times to warn other drivers and they never race down the highway at more than 43 miles per hour. They say the average CEO reads 60 books a year. You know, I'm probably pretty close to that. I have the entire collection of Uncle John's bathroom readers. Research suggests that people unconsciously reveal much of what's going on inside their heads through their eyes. Scientists asked volunteers to call out numbers from 1 to 30 in random sequence. They found that by tracking the volunteers' eye movements, the scientists could predict what number people would call with a 60% accuracy rate. The study, which was conducted at Australia's University of Melbourne, found that people tend to look down and to the left before naming a number that is lower than the last one they mentioned. Conversely, they tend to look up and to the right before calling a number that is higher than the last. So thank you to Australia scientists! I'm sure this will come in handy as we try to solve the world's cancer crisis. A Sri Lankan man was arrested with two pounds of gold hidden in his rectum after he was seen making suspicious movements. That story is gold all by itself. The world's most annoying sound, aside from my voice, is whining. That high-pitched, protracted whining sound that most teenagers, many children, and even some dogs have perfected is the most annoying sound in the world, according to researchers from SUNY New Paltz. The study asked volunteers to compute basic math problems while they were listening to what's often considered the most distracting and irritating sounds. And those included a baby crying, a high-pitched buzzsaw, nagging, silence, regular speech, baby talk, and whining. The volunteers made more errors on the math problems when they were listening to the whining than any other irritating sound. Again, followed closely by listening to the Daily Dose of Weird News with Darren Marlar. A group of conservative Catholic authorities have officially accused Pope Francis of heresy. Apparently, they don't like that he took a knee during Mass. The U.S. Navy plans to equip its Virginia-class submarines with Xbox 360 controllers, which will control the ship's periscopes. The joystick now used, along with its corresponding control panel developed by Lockheed Martin, costs about $38,000. An Xbox 360 controller, meanwhile, goes for $30 bucks and can be purchased about anywhere that carries toys. 
Plus, you know the new recruits grew up with an Xbox. There would be practically zero learning curve for new sailors. A recent study says women with eating disorders are four times more likely to be convicted of theft. Of Twinkies. Rachel Merrick experienced possibly one of the last things you'd expect upon entering a Longhorn Steakhouse. She was bitten by a copperhead snake. In fact, the venomous 8-inch snake was still attached to her foot – she was wearing sandals – after she first felt a sharp pain and she had to shake it loose. She told reporters, "...my fingers wrapped around the bottom of my foot. That's when I felt what turned out to be a snake wriggling in my fingers. I freaked out." The copperhead actually bit her twice on her toes and once on the side of her foot during the incident at the Virginia restaurant. Her boyfriend and her 13-year-old son stomped on the snake to kill it, then called for an ambulance as Merrick's foot started to swell. Eventually, the swelling spread past her knee. Some even reached her hip and thigh. So she was administered anti-venom, which combats the snake's venom, but can come with serious side effects the following day. She was ultimately released from the hospital, but she's still using crutches to avoid putting weight on her injured foot and could take three months to fully recover. She says, "...it's painful just to ride in the car. There's very little that I can do. I can't work. I can't take my kids anywhere. Even phone calls are very difficult because I'm medicated." A Longhorn spokesperson calls the incident highly unusual and says the chain is taking steps to prevent it from happening again. But here's the best part. The rest of this woman's party continued their meal as the woman went to the hospital. The manager comped the entire table. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, we're sorry you got, got uh, bit by a poisonous copperhead snake and, and maybe you'll have to lose your leg, but, but, but we haven't eaten since breakfast. While we continue to complain about all that's wrong with our country, in Egypt, seven gay men were arrested for holding up a rainbow flag at a concert. All right, you know, even if you do believe that homosexuality is a sin, you got to admit, holding up a rainbow flag at a public event and then being arrested for it? That's a bit extreme. A massive iceberg has broken off Antarctica. The U.S. National Ice Center measured the iceberg at 71.5 square miles, about three times the size of Manhattan. They say it's almost as cold as the hearts of Manhattan landlords. Can't tell if this is a publicity stunt or the guy's just an idiot, but rapper B.O.B. has launched a GoFundMe page to prove that the Earth is flat saying we've all been lied to by the cult of science. B.O.B. hopes to raise $200,000 to launch one if not multiple satellites into space in order to find the curve of the Earth. Or, as The Independent puts it, B.O.B. is raising money to send satellites where satellites have definitely been before to see nothing new and witness what everyone already knows. A new study claims that your face tells people whether you're rich or poor. So if I get plastic surgery, I can become independently wealthy? Well, now we can add Chloe to the list of Kardashians expecting a baby. So that makes Chloe, Kim through a surrogate, and Kylie. The Kardashians don't say they're expecting, though. They consider this expanding their brand. If the guy in the cubicle next to you stinks, there's a reason. 20% of men don't use shampoo or deodorant, according to a recent British survey. It gets worse, too. 14% of men think any kind of grooming is just a waste of time. The survey, conducted by SBA Future Thinking, found that men who do take the time to shower, shave, and splash on some cologne do it to boost their own confidences, not to impress women. 20% of men may shun shampoo and deodorant, fully 40% embrace good grooming to such a degree that they regularly use body lotion, lip balm, and other moisturizers. Researchers have come up with the term for that last group, which they have labeled pansies. Ebby and Sofia Vergara have launched a subscription underwear service, allowing users to sign up and receive three pairs of new underwear each three months. Subscription underwear. Is there anything Americans won't pay for so we don't have to leave the house? If you've ever seen a ghostly apparition or heard strange noises, you're not losing your mind and you're probably not psychic. Chances are you just like to drink coffee. Lots and lots of coffee. A study from Durham University in the United Kingdom concludes that people who drink more than seven cups of coffee a day are three times more likely to hallucinate than those who drank just one. 
And I, you know, I can't decide if this is a reason to stop drinking coffee or to start drinking more of it. Aerosmith is canceling the four remaining shows on their South American tour because of Steven Tyler's unexpected medical issues, which can be interpreted as old age. People who marry or live together tend to grow old and fat together, but staying single boosts your chances of remaining slim, says researchers. The recent study in the journal Obesity proves that the longer lovers live together, the chunkier they will get. People living together usually eat together, enjoying larger meals and eating out more often. They are also more apt to watch TV together instead of going to the gym or playing a sport. So if you have a choice, you can either have a loving, fulfilling relationship or you can look good in the mirror. A Florida woman was having an affair with her daughter's husband. When the mom found out that the son-in-law admitted the affair to her daughter, his wife, the mom slash mistress became so upset she attempted to run the man over. Find out what happens next on As the World Turns. Have you ever been this close to having a car crash but miraculously avoided it? You might think you have a guardian angel. Well, now scientists think it's part of your brain, specifically the anterior cingulate cortex, or ACC, that shifts into high gear and makes that split-second maneuver that saves you and your car. Call it a driver's sixth sense. But there is one big gotcha, and it could cost you your life, according to researchers from the University of Houston and the Texas A&M Transportation Institute. And that uh, gotcha, that sixth sense, only works when you're not texting. Hey, thanks for listening. If you're new to the show, become an official weirdo by subscribing and leaving a positive podcast review. For DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and I'll see you next time, weirdos.